Get up to rock, get up to burn, stand with the pride and burn for your desire. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Mid-Atlantic Modeling League's Dungeon Bowl. It is week number four, the midway point of the Dungeon Bowl. And man, we got more of this wackadoo halfling shenanigans going on tonight. Tonight, it's going to be the Mootland Scout Troop number 079 versus the Damaged Dragons, Artificial Bunny versus War Horseman, Halflings versus lizards i know who my money's on and man, don't let me down lizards <laughs> let's take a look at the standings over in division a the dinnerbell darlings currently in first place with a record of 3-0-0 that's doug the minotaur's dwarven team he has followed closely behind by donkey teeth dead fred's wood elf team 2-0-1 is their record and tied for second place the masters of mammal coached by el nuberino a dark elf team 2-0-1 is their record as well we are in division b this evening the friendly neighbor kaiju currently sitting in first place merrick's team they're a lizard team 3-1-0 is their record they are one of two undefeated teams left here in Division B. A massive 10 points to their name in this competition. In second place, apropos of Nuffle coached by Clypheus, a halfling team. 2-1-1 one one is their record. And The Street, an ogre team coached by Nick Satan. They are in third place currently with a record of 2-0-2. Oh, the Moot is in fourth, and they will be up against the Damage Dragons currently in sixth. Man, it's the halfway point. This is where you want to start racking up those wins. And... Uh, I don't like seeing <laughs> I don't like seeing these fling teams and this ogre team in the upper half of the bracket here. <laughs> I don't like this at all. First up, the home team for this evening, the Mootland Scout Troop, coached by Artificial Bunny. That nope, nope, mm -mm, nope. Somebody eject him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mootland Scout Troop 079 coached by Artificial Bunny they're coming in at a paltry TV of 730 this is what you'll see halfling teams uh, do they'll be very very low in TV and that is mostly because these halflings are super duper cheap a level 1 halfling comes in at 30k and uh, they want to get under under TV of their opponents because uh, they get uh, lots of inducements they're looking to pick up uh, two in particular Deep Root Strong Branch will be a third Treeman that they'll pick up and the halfling master chef normally 300k for any other team you know what he'll cut his halfling brethren a, uh, a steep discount and he only costs 100k for a halfling team the halfling master chef uh, rolls 3d6 at the beginning of a half and for every four plus he will steal a reroll away from the opponent and give it to you uh, more precisely your opponent will lose a reroll and you will gain a reroll so if they don't if your opponent doesn't have any rerolls to lose they won't lose them but you will still gain them uh, so on average the moot's going to pick up three re-rolls tonight but we we've seen more <laughs> we've seen all six already <laughs> two treatment the rest are halflings he's leveled up william and he's leveled up chris he put sneaky get on both of these players now i said this with the apropos of nuffle uh match last night and i'm gonna say it again i don't know man i don't i don't know if i like the pickup of sneaky get let alone two of them We'll see if it works out for Artificial Bunny. This is 40k that he's carrying in petty cash. He'll need to put that work in and see if he can get uh, Sneaky Get to work in his favor. 
My problem with Sneaky Git is that it's not the armor roll you care about, right? It's it's really the injury roll that you care about. You want to break armor, sure, uh, but then you want to get that injury roll. You have these halflings. They only have a strength of two. Um, they're going in for the foul. Uh, you know, <sighs> only having a strength of two means they're probably running away all the time. And when you do group them up for that two die block or, or something like that, that's when you go in for the foul. But then you got to break the armor and, and and then you're looking for the injury roll. I don't know, man. I don't I don't know if it's worth it. But uh, <laughs> that's what Jesse Patches says. I respectfully disagree. Fair enough. I mean, that's what's fun about uh, games like this, right? Like everybody's got their own play style. We'll see if it'll work out. Uh, he's got two foulers. Uh, so I imagine that means that we're going to see fouling tonight. <laughs> two rerolls, at least two rerolls, three fan factor for the moot this evening. They will be up against uh, the Damage Dragons coached by War Horseman. This is a lizard team. He's been in the competition all season long. That means his TV is fairly high here at uh, 15, 10 comparatively, that is. And uh, that means that 780,000 gold in petty cash is going to be going back to... Uh, the moot, and that's, that's, man, that's a lot of money. <laughs> that's a lot of money. Uh, but you can see War Horseman has been putting in the work on this roster. Four of his six Saruses have the block skill. That's exactly what you want to do with these Saruses. He's done a great job of spreading that SPP around and getting block on as many Saruses as he can. Uh, that's a great, uh, great work there on, on the roster when you're a, a Lizard coach. Uh, he's got a lot a lot of SPP tied up in these skinks. You'll see that on a lizard team a lot because the skinks tend to be the players who are scoring. He's got the Crocs, who's a level four. He picked up Juggernaut. Juggernaut's not a bad skill to pick up. So Juggernaut means that um, it's not gonna be too effective for the traits it negates in this matchup. So it negates Fen, Stand Firm, and Wrestle, uh, which is not bad. Um, but for him in particular, for the Crocs in particular, so the Crocs doesn't have the block skill. Um, he only has access to the block skill if he rolls doubles. Uh, he doesn't have the block skill. He picked up Juggernaut. That's going to keep it, make his blocks a little safer. On the both down result, he'll be able to treat that like a push instead of getting knocked on his butt. And uh, that's not bad. That's not bad. So uh, we'll see him putting in the work with this Mighty Blow player. He wants to be getting those two, maybe three die blocks, getting... Good work out of Mighty Blow. Juggernaut's going to keep him a little bit safer uh, on that block as well. So uh, not a bad pickup on the Crocs. As for these Skinks, he has a level four Skink in number eight. Number eight has Sprint, Sure Feet, and Sidestep. He has a Blodger in number nine. He has Sneaky Get and Sprint on number 11. And he has Sprint on number 13. Lots of injuries on this roster. A Smash Tip in number seven. I don't think he minds too much. But he has uh, two Concussions, one on 11 and one on 13. Boy, I would mind. <laughs> that's that's a huge loss in AV. Uh, the, there's a big, big difference, right, in each step of AV uh, in this game when you're rolling a 2d6. And uh, six is not a lot. That's halfling territory. <laughs> so he's going to have to be really, really careful if those skinks take to the pitch. He does have a 13-player roster. He can keep those on reserve until he needs them. Uh, but if they do come onto the pitch, he's going to have to be very, very, very careful of not giving up the block on number 11 or number 13, or they will be removed very quickly. Two team re-rolls, maybe for the Damage Dragons this evening. One oppo, seven fan factor. How do the two teams play? Well, Lizards do what Lizards do. They have the Sauruses, uh, they have the Skinks. Now, typically it's a dance between uh, the Sauruses and the Skinks, right? The Sauruses have a lot of strength, but miserable AG. The Skinks have uh, great speed, decent AG. They come with dodge. They're stunty, but they have miserable strength and miserable AV. So the Skinks are your ball carriers. The Saruses are putting in the work. But wherever you take a mark with a Saurus, he's not moving, right? AG1 means you're not dodging. You can dodge, <laughs> but you're not. You're not dodging. That's not the way it's going to play out tonight. Tonight with uh, against a Halfling team, it's everybody's strength too, except for those trees. He's going to be up against three Treemen. He will probably be up against one other player with a, a lot of strength. We'll talk about what that might be in a second. Um, I think tonight he wants to tie up those trees, probably wants to tie up the trees with number five, six, and seven. Uh, he just try, ties up each tree with a Saurus, tries to keep those Sauruses on the pitch for as long as possible. Um, and then he uses the rest of the Sauruses to go after these halflings and just start beating up on halflings. 
Uh, he can't get overextended. He does have to watch out for the fling fling. He has to watch out for that halfling pass. That means a treeman's going to have to be uh, available to, to pass. And uh, and a halfling will be have to be available to be thrown as well. That throw teammate skill. Throw teammate only goes up to a short pass away. That's six spaces orthogonally. He will have to be careful of that. And if those trees successfully block down the pitch, turn after turn, uh, Artificial Bunny could turn that quick pass into a short pass. And that's going to be much, much more difficult to defend against just because there are many more spaces that you have to defend against. Otherwise, quite simply, you're going to try to remove these halflings from the pitch. That's that's the name of the game for War Horsemen tonight. Remove the halflings. Don't tangle with the trees. Just keep them tied up. Keep them busy. Maybe they'll root. The halflings, anytime you, you play a halfling team, you got your work cut out for you. It, it's going to come down to Treeman. It's going to come down to your inducements. He will be getting deep root for 300k. He will be getting the chef for 100k. That's 300k remaining that he has. With that, he could pick up. We've seen Clypheus. He's a big fan of Zara the Slayer. That's a strength four uh, player who has uh, block, dauntless, dodge, jump up, stab, and stakes. Stakes won't uh, won't apply in this matchup. Um, but he could also pick up Bertha for 290. Uh, Zara's 270. Bertha is a strength five player uh, that he can pick up who is a blodger with mighty blow. That, that's a solid pickup as well. Bertha could also throw teammates. Uh, he could pick up uh, Willow if he wants to go cheaper for 150k. Uh, Willow's a strength four player that has sidestep and dauntless. Uh, he has a lot of options here in the, in the inducement phase. He could also go for a wizard and maybe pick up a couple of bribes with these sneaky gits. Maybe that's the option he chooses. So what he chooses in the inducement phase is going to betray what his strategy is going to be tonight. Um, his job is to keep these halflings alive, to try to use those treemen to uh, to control the pitch, uh, to set up, to always threaten that halfling pass, and otherwise just try to get some halflings into position so that he can move them down pitch for a, a running uh, score. But they're just, they're so slow and they're so weak. It's really hard to do. All right, both coaches are in Discord, so let's see if this game's about to get underway, shall we? All right, we'll see what Artificial Bunny picked up in the inducement phase in just a minute, so you can see Picked up Deep Root naturally. It looks like the Damage Dragons are going to be on defense to start with. That uh, Chef only picked up one reroll for the half. He picked up a Bribe. He picked up Deep Root. He picked up Zara. He had a 13-player roster, right? 11, 12, 13, one with Zara. So he's got Zara, Deep Root, and the Bribe is... And the chef, of course, is how he decided to go with this. So uh, Zara with uh, Stab is going to be trying to make good use of Stab. She also has Dauntless. Um, he can, uh, she can go after the Crocs maybe with that. She can even get a two die on a Saurus uh, very easily. Dauntless means she'll just need the one assist provided she gets to the Dauntless roll. Artificial Bunny probably upset about just the one reroll stolen from the Damaged Dragons. Oh, it looks like he got a reroll. Yeah, he got the extra reroll. So the Damaged Dragons are going to keep their rerolls here. And three to the moot to uh, turn one. They'll be on offense to start this game. They do have a Nuffle Altar. That's uh, how they got both of these players without having to dip into their treasury. They each cost 50k less. Two die block to get things started with the Treeman. They have the loner skill. They rolled. <laughs> they roll, oh, I'm sorry, the Treeman don't have loner. Uh, they roll double skulls. <laughs> Usually your big guys will have loners, but not on a halfling team. These Treemen are, uh, tree are not loners, except for Deep Root, of course, who is a star player. Every star player is a loner. They don't work with anybody. I had to spend the reroll there, and now the moot's down to the two rerolls that they they have on the roster.
War Horseman deciding to put th three block Lizardmen on the line. And you can see that maybe that was a good call here. Uh, blocks a very strong skill. It makes the both down results safe for you and not for your opponent if they don't have the block skill. Deep Root, of course, does have the block skill. So deciding not to use the block on any blitzes, instead trying to tie up these trees, uh, make it a little bit safer on these uh, tree blocks and keep them on the pitch for a little bit longer. Three tree blocks, three pushes. Zara Blitz will be coming up shortly. We'll see uh, We'll see Artificial Bunny reposition these halflings first. Oh, they take a mark on the number six stars. You won't normally see halflings take a mark unless they can get something out of it. Here he's going to get the assist uh, that he uh, wants with Zara to make this a two-die Blitz. Got the knockdown, got a good stun. I think the ranger asks, why is there no morgue? Because <laughs> morgue is terrible. <laughs> and going for the foul with the sneaky get. Here we go, two assists. Wow. Would have been called off, but didn't break armor. And that's what sneaky get does. Sneaky get does, says if, uh, if you don't break armor, if you're not successful on your foul, you don't get called off whether you roll doubles or not. So, uh, good use of Sneaky Git here in turn one. Good ball pickup by Billy. He'll advance to the Moot's eight-yard line. Twenty-seven seconds left in this first turn of tonight's game. Turn one back to the Damage Dragons. Poor Horseman clearly praying at this Nuffle Altar before the game. Kept both his both of his rerolls. He really wants to be at three, but he only has two on the roster. So uh, really wants to keep them if he can, and he has. Takes a mark on William and Andy Jr. with Ottle of the Lake, the number five Saurus, over on the right side of the pitch. Takes a second mark, too. That's a mark with a, a block Saurus. Um, fair enough. He wants to try to get rid of these halflings. These halflings do have a positive dodge, though, and they have the dodge skill. I, I may have saved saved Asaurus as a linebacker to move him around, but he's got the Crocs in that position instead. So fair enough. We'll see uh, where he wants to take the Blitz with the Crocs. Moving Asaurus up. Typically, he'd want to keep these... Asaurus. Moving a Skink up, rather. Typically, he'd want to keep these Skinks safe. You can see he set them all up as safeties, but he's moving forward because... Uh, they're not the underdogs in this matchup. Strength 2 versus a Strength 2 team. He will, of course, have to watch out for Zara the Slayer. But otherwise, he can go in with these skinks. He can treat this as if it was a 3v3 matchup. Strength 3 versus Strength 3. Um, and go in for, just play solid Blood Bowl with them. Go in and get the assist for the 2-die block. Try to get the knockdown. He does, in fact, have the AV advantage. Which is... Uh, this is the only matchup, this and the Ogre team is the only matchup where we'll have the AV advantage, uh, barring any any injuries. Doesn't want to take any blocks on the line. He just, want to keep, he just wants to keep these treemen tied up. Here's that Croc splits. He got through the boneheaded roll. Three dive blitz on Chris gets the pal here. This is good. A good decision to go after these halflings. Didn't break armor, though. Decided to follow up. He's marked by the tree, though. Could have come at it uh, uh, another way and not be marked by the tree. Turn two now for the moot. A 
I'm not going to tell you how this came to be, but I have three glasses of drinks on my desk right now. I have a glass of apple juice and two glasses of water. <laughs> this, is, this is getting out of hand. Stab Blitz with Zara and gets the first injury of this game. Well done. The moot's going to hunt the skinks. The skinks are going to hunt the halflings. Stab means he doesn't have to take a block roll. He just goes straight to the armor roll. <laughs> Speed Beaver says, boo, come on, ref. Protect those skinks. That, w that was totally fair. Stakes are allowed. Uh, <laughs> I guess she's stabbing with the stake. Stakes are allowed. That's totally within the rules. Read the rule book. <laughs> yeah, did I block on that Crocs is going to allow this tree to move out to the left protect some of these halflings and stay on that crocs there's a foul foul on Osaris. he broke armor and got a ko my goodness well i talked about how i don't like i don't like the sneaky get pickup uh because i didn't think he'd get get the removals but here here it is <laughs> Well done by Artificial Bunny. Two-man player advantage now for this halfling team. One of the Sauruses removed. Trees shift over to the left where the ball is. Is he going to dodge out these halflings? I think he will. Yeah, he's got to cover the right side first, just in case these dodges go awry. Good dodge with the free dodge reroll. Didn't need it that time. That'll be the turn. Turn two back to the damaged dragons now. Two rerolls apiece. Stands up the Crocs, gets through the boneheaded roll. Boneheaded is the mega trait for the Crocs. Has to roll a d6 before he takes his action. If he rolls a one, he doesn't get his action. And he doesn't get his tackle zones until he passes that roll on a future turn. Shifts one of the safeties to the left. Shifts both safeties to the left. Trying to stay in front of this halfling cage. These trees are marching down pitch. At some point, he's going to have to be careful of the halfling toss here. Yeah, he's got to go in on the ball. Two die blitz. He gets a push on Derek. He'll follow up. Unless he wants to reposition. Does he have movement left? No, he'll follow up, and that's good. Halflings are weak, brittle, and slow. Ooh, GFI has to get a mark on the ball carrier. Well done. He's got to get aggressive here. If he's going to have these players off to the side, he's got to get aggressive because these trees are going to keep marching turn after turn. And uh, if they get to about mid-pitch, then he's going to need all hands on deck to defend against the fling-fling. Failed skink dodge here. Is he going to spend the reroll? I think he will. Doesn't want to risk losing his skink. I don't know if that mark was necessary, but he's got a second mark on the ball carrier. Well done. He wanted to avoid that positive dodge away. Didn't want to park the skink out a little further here. Oh, he didn't even fail the dodge. He failed the GFI. I was wondering why he got a reroll, a team reroll out of that. <laughs> Turn three for the moot now. We'll 
probably see them pulling an assist to get the two die block on number 13. Might even be the... Why does he already have... Oh, because uh, Garlot's out of action, that's why. Yeah, I was going to say, might even be the Blitz here so he can get the, the free movement away and then he can continue moving. Well done, Fire Official Bunny. Ball crosses the line of scrimmage. He's now on the opposing six-yard line over in the left wide zone. Already has protection on the ball carrier. He's going to fill in the gaps here. Two dive block on the Crocs. Gets a push. Problem with this Crocs, uh, having positioned this Crocs next to the tree on that previous turn, is now you're not getting use of your mighty blow player. So he'll be tied up by this tree forevermore. <laughs> Gets a push on number two. Trees are done taking blocks. Good dodge to get the assist on number 13. Two die block on number 13. Got the pal. This is the AV6 skink, but didn't break armor. Just needed a seven plus. SB Beaver says he could always dodge the crocs away. Yup. <laughs> it sure could. <laughs> See what he's going to do with these uh, Andy Jr. here. Yeah, moves them down pitch. Tries to get them into this drive. Feels the, uh, the Garlton Otto of the Lake at mid-pitch here. He feels they've been uh, sufficiently picked off. They're not going to be a threat. And now these remaining two halflings are going to move down pitch and try to get into this drive and do some work. One assist on the foul here. Six plus is what he needs. Didn't. Get it. <laughs> It'll probably be it. Yeah, turn three for the damage dragons now. Yeah, War Horseman's gonna have to be very, very careful giving up these injured skinks. because uh, uh, the likelihood of their removal is pretty high. No action in over a minute here. We finally start off with the two-die blitz on Derek. It's going to be a push. Probably doesn't follow up here. Oh, he did follow up. If he didn't follow up, he could try to get a mark on the ball carrier. He might try to do that with Otto of the Lake instead. Oh, I didn't realize. Yeah, he can't, can't do it anyway. Can't do it anyway. Oh, don't, don't try it. Don't try it. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> takes a mark on Derek. All he's trying to do here is trying to eliminate halflings. The problem is he's got two marks on a single halfling here. Um, oh. Well, it's better than nothing. It's better than nothing. This foul right here, as it stands with the one assist, this foul here, it's effectively an AV5. That's, a, that's an over 70% chance of success on the armor break. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's going to be curtains shortly for number 13. Wow. Takes the one die block on the number two Treeman and gets the knockdown. These Treeman only have an MA of two. You need three to stand up normally. If you have less than that, you have to roll a D6. On the four plus, you'll be able to stand up. 
So that Treeman might not be getting back up. Turn four, back to the Moot Scout Troop. I imagine they'll, they'll move a half cage down pitch. Perhaps see a. Oh, I was going to say, perhaps see a Zara Blitz on number 11. We might still see that. But uh, now his positioning for the ball carrier is going to have to be a little different. Yeah. Two die Zara Blitz on the ball. On a. Uh, I'm sorry, it's going to be a Stab Blitz on the number 11 Skink. Breaks armor. Got a KO. Well done. Artificial Bunny doing a great job of hunting these skinks down. Is that three-man player advantage now? Three-man player advantage for this halfling team. Damage Dragons finding all of their players tied up by uh, pieces they don't want to be tied up with. Yeah, there's that broken armor and got the death. I can't imagine the Apo will be spent here. He will get called off after rolling. Oh, he picked up that bribe. Yeah, he gets called off after rolling the 12 on the armor break. But the, the ref will gladly accept the bribe. And now the Moot has spent their bribe. Yeah, as we said, very high probability of breaking armor. And then he rolled the six on the Kaz roll as well. And that is a death. <laughs> the ranger says, come on, ref. The ref says, I got bills. I got bills to pay. <laughs> Scout leader Sycamore is going to take root. He's going to stay put. Um, unless something uh, something bad happens. Unless uh, War Horseman ends up taking a block on the treeman. SB Beaver says, what kind of game are we playing now? Back in my day, we played pure Blood Bowl, where, where stakes were fine. <laughs> and refs weren't bribed. Resurrecting opponents from the dead? That was the game we played back in my day. Failed Halfling Dodge. He's going to get KO'd for his troubles, and that'll be a turnover. Whoa, that, that is quite a tree. <laughs> Whoo! <laughs> Final third of the first quarter coming up. Damage Dragons. They don't really have a good way of getting at this ball carrier. We'll see if he does the YOLO dodge to a blitz. Can he can he get anything out of that? One, two, three, four, five, six. It'd be a GFI two die. Man. Whew. I might try it. <laughs> I might try it. <laughs> but first, he's got to stand up. He's got to stand up number three. He's got to move with four and five. He might try to blitz with uh, four instead. Seeing as this dodge is, is a janky dodge, that's going to be a five plus dodge <laughs> if he wants to go after the ball carrier. He could go for the blitz on number eight and then take the mark instead on the ball carrier. Doesn't look like he's going to do that. Instead, he's going to tie up a whole bunch of halflings. All right. It looks like he will go for the dodge on the ball carrier. He's looking for a five plus. He does have a reroll. I don't know if he wants to spend it. Ugh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> He is going to spend it. He's doing it with the Crocs instead. <laughs> it didn't work out. <laughs> he went for it. Tried to go after the ball carrier. It's not going to work out. And now, Mootland Scout Troop. They might not score on this turn. It's going to decide if they want to take blocks or not. Um, so they'll take a three die block against the number eight skink. Look at the pal here. Looking for the eight plus.
Good removal there. I think that's a four-man player advantage now for the move. At some point, we'll come off of this, we'll come out of this view, right? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Five-man, uh, four-man player advantage for the Mootland Scout Troop now. So whether he scores or not, it's going to depend on whether he wants halflings to eat dice. He does have a pretty strong player advantage. Only two KO'd players. He might just want to score. No, he's going to stall this out. Let's go. Let's go. No rerolls left for the Damage Dragons. Two for the Mootland Scout Troop. Gonna get uh, two, three, four. That's a one die block currently on number five. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go. Blocked out of Saurus. I want to see it. Yeah. Two die block gets the push on Otto of the Lake. Doesn't follow up. He's currently got two assists on number four. <laughs> if he wants to take, well, four, five, six, he can take the Zara Blitz. Yeah, he's going to go for the Zara Stab Blitz here. Oh, he's just going to go the regular Blitz. Got the pal. Yeah, that's a good call. Very good call. He doesn't want to... Wait, why would he do that? He just wants the knockdown? Oh, he wants the knockdown to go for the foul. That's why he did that. That's why he did that. All right. Three assists on this foul. Got a KO. Did not get called off. Wow, that's another Saurus removed. Oppo's going to get spent there, and that Saurus is going to be stunned instead. Interesting choice to spend the Apothecary. He's going to leave him on the pitch. I don't know if he's going to get any work out of that Saurus, though, now that he's stunned. And uh, the ball's just hanging out right on the 24-yard line. to knock down our number two. Five-man player advantage, I believe. One... Oh, no. Four-man player advantage, because uh, the apple was spent. Boy. Wow. Wow. And now the moot finds themselves <laughs> being the bashy team. Turn five back to the damaged dragons now. Stand up a couple of players. Takes a two die block against Timmy Jr. It'll be a dodge push. He's going to try to dodge out this Crocs again. No! No, he's going to push the Treeman away. He won't follow up. Yeah, and now he's going to move this Crocs a couple of spaces. Three to stand up, one to bl uh, take that Blitz block. Now he has two spaces left. Is he going to GFI? He is. That's one GFI. Took that second one. You tempted fate. You tempted Nuffle. <laughs> if he would have stayed on his feet, I imagine we would have seen a stab blitz on the Crocs. And had that failed, we'd see a score. But now the Moot might try to stall this out a little bit longer. Yeah, look at a player right in a position. Marking that Crocs. Deep Root Blitz. <laughs> Give me that two-die blitz against Uaz of the Moon. It's either a both standing result or a push, unless he spends the reroll, which he doesn't want to do due to Loner. 
Decides to take the push. And get that free space of movement out of it. Well done. When you only have an MA of two, every push, every push is great, right? That's that's 50% extra movement you're getting. Gets a pal on Otto of the Lake. Doesn't break armor. Still has a two die block with Scout Leader Sycamore. Might not take it because he probably doesn't want to push that Saurus back and free him up. Yeah. <laughs> Is he going to foul the Crocs? Is he going to foul the Crocs? One, two, three, four. Three assists. He can get four with Zara. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> GFI Chris in there. Get five assists. <laughs> Here we go. Four assists on the Crocs. Bringing his AV down to five. Broke armor. Got a stun out of it. Did not get called off the pitch. And that may very well be the turn. Turn six back to the Damage Dragons. Again, you can see that Scout Leader Sycamore not taking the block because he's rooted. Uh, if he knocks down that Saurus, if he pushes that Saurus away, he won't be able to follow up and then that Saurus will be free. Looks like he's going after Assistant Leader Twiggy. That's only a one die blitz though. Oh. Oh, he got the knockdown, though. Looking for an, a massive 11 plus. Didn't get it. GFI has to take a mark on Chris, the number six half one over in the left wide zone. And that might be the turn. I don't think he wants to dodge away at number two. A, because the dodge just isn't going to work. But B, you don't want to free up Deep Root to move wherever he wants to go. Oh, boy! He dodged away. Number seven says, see you later, Scout Leader Sycamore. SB Beaver says, sorry, are the best Dodgers. <laughs> oh, wah! Whoa, he dodged away number two as well. This is going to free up Deep Root Strong Branch to perhaps take a blitz on, uh, on number seven here. Maybe number four. Two Saurus dodges. Wow. Saurus, so that's five plus. That's a one third chance. So doing two of them back to back, that's 11? 11 percent. <laughs> Looks like the Moot are going to try to stall this out for another turn here. They're setting up some protective cover on the ball carrier. Not going to blitz with Deep Root. Instead, he's going to do the stab blitz, it looks like. Because, well, yeah, probably just does the stab blitz with Zara. Goes after number seven. And then he'll reposition Zara after this. Gets a push out of it. That'll be fine. Dodge. Fail dodge. Good thing Zara got in the position after that failed dodge. Turn seven now, back to the damage dragons. No rerolls left for the team in this half.
His only hope I had getting it, <laughs> I was gonna say, his only hope of getting at the ball carrier would be some sort of blitz. Probably wanted to take, he took, tried to take the blitz to the cracks, probably wanted to take the blitz here. Right? One, two, three, four, five, five, six, or six, or something. That way it wouldn't have to be a, a crazy dodge to get on the ball carrier. Also could have made use of the block skill there. Blitz spent. He will not be able to mark this ball carrier unless... <laughs> unless he has prayed to Nuffle. He's got... He's got sixes, fives and sixes to roll. I think he might just call this, uh, call this a turn. Pull everybody back. Avoid any further, any further injury. Call it a turn. Oh, he's going to take a mark. Takes a mark. He's not going to be able to get anything out of this unless... Unless the moot doesn't... Doesn't score. Twenty-two seconds left in turn number seven. Ten seconds. There's not really anything he can do here. Unless he just... <laughs> just really goes for it. Oh my goodness. Oh, I thought he was... I saw him trampling down pitch. Turn eight. It's time for the moot to walk this ball in. They can take some blocks. They do have re-rolls. It would be the smarter thing to do. But I always just go for the score. <laughs> And he's going to do it. Tries to take out number two, and then he'll score one to zero. The Moodland Scout Troop will take the lead in this game. Well done. Well played by Artificial Bunny. One turn left in the first half, unless there's a riot. The Damage Dragons really can't get anything going with just one turn, and they're going to be down a whole bunch of players. So they'll be down, I believe. Oh, I think they'll be 11 v 11 on the pitch, actually. But no, they'll be down two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He's down one. 11 v 10 on the pitch. Damn it, dragons. He'll be on offense. Wootland Scout Troop is just going to set all of these players way back on that end zone. We've got to put three on the line. It'll be the three treemen naturally. Oh, did he leave a player behind? He left Derek behind. Oh, the damaged dragons. Whoa, the damaged dragons should murder Derek. Should absolutely murder Derek. <laughs> uh, Artificial Bunny left a halfling behind. Swoop in there and murder a halfling. <laughs> No rerolls left. He has two back to receive. I think he puts everybody up here on the line and he goes after the halfling. Here's the kick. No kicker for the moot. Damage <laughs> Dragons are going to get a reroll. 
Okay. <laughs> it's going to be a touchback. So he might have an opportunity here to get some SVP. The odds are, have been increased a bit. Um, but man, I'm going to be really sad if he doesn't go after this half like He might not see it, depending on his camera settings. Or if he, he wasn't paying attention on the setup. Go murder, murder Derek! Doesn't have a block player to murder with. Let's put all the block players on the line. Yeah! Oh no, he's going after the treeman. Oh no, no, no! Go after Derek! Go after Derek! No! <laughs> no! <laughs> Dude, I block on Scout Leader Sycamore. Stand firm. He's got another opportunity at Derek here. This time with a blocker. He's, he's not going to be able to get a deep root. Takes the two die block on assistant leader Twiggy. He's going to stand firm and stay put. Oh, he spends the reroll, gets the pal. He'll still stand firm. Yeah, still can't get the block on deep root. He can reposition number seven, but, but he should go after Derek. Kill Derek, kill Derek, kill Derek, kill Derek. Ah! <laughs> ah, he's gonna get a two die on deep root. Kill Derek! <laughs> Derek, oh, you rascal. <laughs> Four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a two die block on deep root strong branch. Fourteen seconds left. No action yet. You might be realizing that there was a halfling hiding behind the tree. Going for the foul instead. It only has one assist on this foul. Didn't break armor. Really hard to break the armor on the tree. Man. Wootland Scout Troop. 079 in the lead. The Damage Dragons will be on offense to start the second half of this game. They'll have uh, 10 players taking to the pitch. Put down a number of skinks. And the chef is going to take just one reroll again. So under odds on the chef in tonight's game. Just two for the game. But the Damage Dragons, starting with only two rerolls, they're going to be down to just one. So action order is going to be important. They're going to hold on to that reroll until they can convert it into something that ultimately leads to points. Artificial Bunny, he has two rerolls on the roster. Generally, you want to be at three, but he has two because he knows he's picking up a chef. Odds are he's going to get at least one reroll, so that'll bring him up to the three that he wants to be at. Mootland Scout Troop setting up on defense very wide on the line with the three Treemen. And keeping all these halflings close to the line of scrimmage. Too wide in either wide zone.
four halfbacks as well. Damage Dragons looks to be setting up strong on the left side here. They're going to go after that left defensive tackle, assistant leader Twiggy. So he's got the three he needs on the line here. They're all block players, though. I would, I would free up some block players to to make them mobile, at least one. So I could have a mobile block player, put him in the halfback position. Setting up in an eye formation here over on the left side of the pitch. Oh man, WrestleQuest comes out tomorrow. Man, if you haven't heard of WrestleQuest, I know nothing about wrestling. But WrestleQuest is an RPG with wrestlers and it has like real wrestlers in it, like Sergeant Slaughter and stuff. I'm super stoked for this game. <laughs> it looks so fun. All right, here's the kick. But it's gonna stay the same, but scatter one extra space. Pretty shallow kick by the moot. Turn number nine for the Damage Dragons. Two skinks very deep. These skinks are super duper fast. So generally speaking, you don't have to set them up too deep. You can set them up, say, here, and they can still get anywhere on the pitch. By setting, by setting them up so far back, uh, basically you're, you're losing movement points with them because they're going to have to spend them moving just to get back up to your line. Setting up a cage on his own eight yard line at mid pitch. So they have a tight cage here, but uh, the problem with this is <laughs> Scout Leader Sycamore is free, free to move. Goes for the ball pickup, shuffles this ball all the way over the left side. So, so this setup here, this these cage players. He set this up just in case the ball pickup failed. Um, what he could have done is, I think this was fine. Uh, I don't think this was necessary because nobody, nobody's fast enough to get in here. This player could have come up this way instead. And then if the ball pickup failed, he'd be in decent shape. Now you could argue maybe the ball scatters here and then a halfling comes up, maybe GFI's onto the ball or something, but I doubt it. And if he does, what's he going to do? <laughs> He's going to eat... He's going to eat dice coming your way. The problem, though, is that this Treeman has not been marked. I think he really does want to pull in Asaris and, and mark this Treeman. Takes a mark on Davy, the number seven halfling. As you do, he wants to be getting these blocks on these halflings and take them off the pitch. All right, and takes a mark on assistant leader Twiggy. Fails his boneheaded roll with the Crocs. The Crocs is going to lose his tackle zones, but that's all right. The ball carrier is still in pretty good shape. Turn nine for the moot now. So deciding not to mark the stream and instead just saying, you know what? I'm just going to run away from you. You can't catch me with that MA of two. Deep root with a two dive block. It's a push against Garlt, the number four Saris. Remember, deep root has the block skill, which is huge. Strength seven and the block skill. Man, what a player. What a pro. What a star. Second tree push here. He's going to push in on this on this offense.
He has a lot of players tied up in trees here. He's got one, two, three, four players tied up in trees. Uh, really wants to try to keep that down to one player per tree. Uh, and then spend the rest of these Saruses punching halflings. Open up a hole for Zara. Good dodge onto the ball carrier. Stab Blitz on the number 11 Skink. Didn't break armor. <laughs> wow, very well done by Artificial Bunny if it wasn't able to break armor. <laughs> Spend the reroll here. He's going to try to throw. <laughs> Tried to throw Derek. <laughs> it was a bad throw, but Derek would land on his feet. <laughs> Derek just said, you know what? I'm cool right where I am, man. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Probably was going to try to use Derek as a as human ammunition. Has three assists on Otto of the Lake. Fifteen seconds left in turn number nine. He's deciding if he wants to take this one die or not. He is going to take the one die. He rolled into a skull. Huh. And that's going to free up the number seven, Saris. Damage dragons now are going to be free to move this ball down pitch. They'll have to dodge with the skink. But it's going to be a, a positive three plus dodge. Oh, no. Tried to move that skink into position, failed the dodge. Thankfully, the skink wasn't removed. Got a free reroll with the dodge skill. Couldn't spend a reroll, a team reroll on it. Two die block by the, by the moots. <laughs> Spent the reroll here. It's going to be a both standing result. Both teams down to one reroll remaining. Wanted to spend the reroll there to open up the hole. Remember, the Crocs is still boneheaded, so it's still not exerting any tackle zones. Here's the toss <laughs> to Osiris. <laughs> I got a stun out of it, but also got Timmy Jr. got injured. <laughs> That's a good trade, though. <laughs> trade a fling for Osiris? Sure. <laughs> I love this team. <laughs> oh, well done. <laughs> Wasn't even the target he was going for, but that's all right. <laughs> More than likely, his target was uh, number three here, Mazda Munlashi. It's a knockdown with the uh, Treeman block, and we'll take a mark on that number three, Saris. Oh. 
goes for the ball pickup with Zara. Good 50 50 ball pickup. Good <laughs> three plus dodge away as well. <laughs> Whitlin Scout Troop with the ball in the hands of Zara the Slayer. She can score. She does. It's going to be lost SPP, but I don't think the moot's going to mind too much. Let's see if Zara can stay on her feet. Here comes a foul. One, two assists. <laughs> Our second death of the evening. Yes, sir. Let's go. <laughs> Good foul <laughs> by the Moonland Scout Troop. <laughs> Wow! Wow! <laughs> Murder to Cyrus! <laughs> oh, damn it's dragons now! <laughs> Turn 11. We're gonna get the knockout on the tree, man. Let's freeze up number three. Got the assist to get the two die blitz on Zara. Zara is a blodger though. Only the pal will knock her down. Can he get it? That's <laughs> not going to be enough. It's going to be a dodge push. And now Zara is going to get pushed one, sp one space closer to the end zone. And now she has a free positive dodge unless Hiccup gets in front of uh, Zara. Which he does. SP Beaver says, yes, this is why you never spend the oppo. Yes, sir. I mean, it could be it could be a good tactical use. Uh, I don't think the oppo spent on that last drive was really worth it. Uh, because it was a KO, so maybe you get him back anyway. And, you know, your best shot is that he stays on the pitch, which he did. But... Um, Uh, the Mootland Scout Troop was already knocking on the door of the end zone at that point, so... Tried another 5-plus dodge here. Failed. That'll be a turnover. Turn 11 for the Moot. Move William into position between the number six Saris and where he wants to go. Is there going to blitz the skink? Yes, indeed. Oh, he wants he wanted something better than that. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. That KO means there's now a free space to move. <laughs> he wanted to push, but that'll work. Two-die block on Garlt. Breaks armor. Wow! Wow! Who's the bashy team here? Are these goblins dressed up as, liz as uh, lizards? Is that what's going on here? Breaking all of this lizard... Lizard armor. This... Strong lizard armor. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Fail halfling dodge. That'll be a KO. Where are we at on the pitch?
So 97 on the pitch, is that right? Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 versus 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That can't be right. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, 97. Two man player advantage for the Moonland Scout Troop. Really, not a huge. Ugh, gets a KO. One man player advantage for the Mutant Scout Troop now. Really doesn't have a whole lot of chance to, to stop Zara from scoring. Probably just wants to stop any halflings from getting the ball instead, but uh, if he doesn't go after Zara, Zara's probably going to stall. Six seconds because the three die block on Chris, the number six halfling, only gets a push out of this. He's looking for ways to maximize his dice. Good work. Just didn't get the knockdown, unfortunately. Still has his blitz. He could go after Zara with the uphill block. I don't think he wants to. The best he could do is mark Zara, but then Zara's just going to murder a skink. I don't think that's worth it either. I think maybe he just repositions the skink in front of Josh just so uh, Zara can't hand that ball off to Josh or something and, and then Josh get the SVP. Oh, he is going after Zara. Here's the uphill... Two die uphill block on Zara. It'll be a push. Zara's gonna get pushed one space toward the end zone. <laughs> no. <laughs> he says, I'm not giving that to you. <laughs> Turn 12 now for the moot. Zara with the blitz probably won't be a stab blitz. It'll probably be a real blitz just so she can get the push to score. But if he can find a way to get the ball, yeah, regular blitz here gets the dodge push. And so he'll just walk the ball in, I believe. There it is. Two to zero. Mootland Scout Troop increases their lead. Three SPP will be lost to Zara the Slayer. But you know what? To go up 2-0, I think that's worth it. Well done. Nuffle, give him back somebody. There you go. <laughs> All right, Damage Dragons are going to find themselves on offense yet again for the final quarter of this game. They are down to just six players. Six v 11, right? Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. <laughs> Oh, oh, okay, it's eight. Shoo! <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Three-man player advantage for the Moot. Damage Dragons with no re-rolls remaining. Moot and Scout Troop has one. Moot and Scout Troop yet again not lining up against these trees. He's allowing these trees free movement, and you can see Artificial Bunny has been taking advantage of that. He will absolutely allow these trees to come in and take blocks. They are very, very strong. Deep Root has 
block. They uh, they all have mighty blow. Um, very, very potent pieces uh, who also stand firm. So when they're in position, they will control that position. Best thing to do, in my opinion, is just tie them up and uh, just keep them out of the drive. Here's the kick. Quick snap. All of the damaged dragons get to move to one adjacent space. I would imagine they want to do that with their crocs. They want to do that with uh, one of their sarses here. All their skinks will move up. Oh, it looks like all of their players are moving up. Ball's going to get kicked into the left wide zone on the 16-yard line. Turn 13 now for the Damage Dragons. They have four turns to get on the board. <laughs> Dead Freddy, welcome. <laughs> Three-man player advantage for the Moodland Scout Troop. Again, he's getting a mark on the ball here, but the skink would be better served by moving up to where the ball carrier is going to be. So, for example, if this is the ball, the player who's going to pick up the ball, he might end up up here. The skinks can move up here and protect the ball carrier where he ends up moving. Because there's no need to protect back here. Uh, nobody can get here. Fails the boneheaded roll with the crocs. SP Viewer says a halfling can get tossed there. Sure. A halfling can get tossed. Can get tossed here. <laughs> a halfling can get tossed here. <laughs> Dead Freddy says, sorry, I'm still adjusting the halfling success. Yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> Failed ball pickup. Turn 13. Back to the moot. Two die block on the line. Go for the throw here. Oh, lands on, lands on his feet, lands on his feet, a Rooney. Yeah, that free, that free Treeman's gonna tie up the number seven Saris. Two die block by Zara gets the knockdown. Looking for a 10 plus here. Doesn't get it. So he tossed Derek. Derek's not really a threat. If Derek goes into this ball, Derek's dying. But Artificial Bunny might be banking on the fact that he has a reroll and War Horseman does not. Hoping for a failed pickup or some other uh, some other turnover. I cannot, I cannot believe that just happened. Five plus ball pickup succeeded. <laughs> well, Derek's still going to get murdered, but that ball pickup means another turn is wasted here. The Damage Dragons, it's a turn they can't afford to lose. S. Beaver says that's why you protect the ball. <laughs> he can't score. <laughs> Two assists aren't going to, to help. He just needed the one. Should have left a skink to pick up the ball. He'll get the pal here. 
But moving both skinks first, he's not going to have a... I stand corrected. <laughs> Yet again, I stand corrected. I was going to say, by moving in the skink for the second assist, which uh, he had the two-die block with the one assist, he wouldn't have a skink to move the ball, but <laughs> the ball scatters into the hands of the blitzer, and now he can move the ball. <laughs> Thank the ranger says I declare shenanigans. <laughs> but now, now there's trouble, right? Now there's trouble. Takes the one die block on assistant leader Twiggy. He'll get the knockdown here. This is going to free up number two. He desperately needs an extra player. <laughs> Dead Freddy says, I would have caught the ball with the blitzer too. Nice play. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I would have totally decided to do that. <laughs> Only moves back a single player. Turn 14 now. For the Moon Scout Troop, two turns left for the Damage Dragons to try to score. They're going to have to end this next turn in scoring position. Can they do it? Good stand-up roll by the number two Treeman. R.I.P. Idol of the Lake. And you, little skink, who should have been dead anyway. <laughs> Your time has come! But out of the lake, he died He died too soon. Throw a halfling. <laughs> is he gonna try to hit the ball carrier? He's gonna land on his back, is what he's gonna do. Holy moly! <laughs> I didn't see that again. Man, he just he just got flipped around like five different ways. <laughs> Lands on his back. Flips forward, flips back. Flips around, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> he was writhing in agony. He was. <laughs> Seventeen seconds left in turn fourteen. Artificial Bunny deciding what to do with the remainder of his players. He still has his blitz. He just really needs to protect against this run, this skink run. Might be a pause. No, he just let the timer run out. No pause. All right, turn fifteen for the damage dragons. I hope Artificial Bunny is okay. <laughs> no rerolls left for either team, for either coach. No action here. I wonder if something's happened. Nope. <laughs> okay, good. Phew. <laughs> Two, three die blitz against Davy, the number seven halfling. Look at the pal. I'll push him straight back. He's going to break armor here. He's looking for a seven plus. Follows up, but he can't move that Saurus anymore. So now he's going to move the ball carrier down pitch. He has to. Oh, 
Oh, he's got to move further than that. He's got to move further than that. If he wants protection on the ball carrier, he's got to move further than that. He's got to go further. He's got to go further. But oh, he's marking the halfling now. So the best he can do now is get number three down pitch. Is that enough? Yeah, that's enough. That'll still be pretty good protection. He'll move number three. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, God. That's not far enough. That's not far enough. Four. One more. Ah! <laughs> All right. So he is technically in scoring position, but now it's going to have to be a GFI. I suppose it was a GFI one way or another. If not for the skink, then for the Saris. SB River says I'm playing the hard way. That is not something that happens. They are stunty. They are stunty. And I have to imagine, let's see. It looks like he is going to try to go for the blitz attempt. Two die blitz on Mazda Munlashi, the number three Saris. We'll get the push. He follows up, and now there is nowhere for the skink to go. That is the game. Well done by Artificial Bunny. They're going to win this one two to zero. Oh, <laughs> it could it could conceivably be three to zero. We'll see. Final turn of the game. Damage Dragons now have nowhere to go with this ball carrier. Oh, wait. Wait, she's strength four. He's got a two-die block here. He's got a two-die block here. He's got a two-die block here! Hey! Ah. Oh. I don't know why I thought she was strict five for some reason. Well done. Now it's a GFI to score. One GFI to score. He doesn't want to roll any more dice. He doesn't have a reroll. Here he comes. Can he get on the board? He can. Well done. Two to one the scorer. Damage Dragons earn themselves a touchdown. Well earned. Oh, I thought she was five. I thought she was strength five. Who's strength five? Is it Bertha? Bertha's strength five. Yeah, Bertha's five. One turn left in this ball game, unless there's a riot, but you know what? You know what? The moot can score in one turn. And the Damage Dragons are going to have to consider that with their defensive formation here. There's a pass. There's a pass option. There's a pass option. That's too far away. So he's going to have to... He's going to have to cover these spaces here. He has to cover these spaces. It looks like he's doing just that. He's, he's pulling back a little bit. I'd put him like dead on those spaces. <laughs> but pulling him back one space that uh, he's trying to maximize the amount of dodges that the halflings need to do. The problem is they can just move diagonally.
All right, Mootland Scout Troop. They're going to try to get the block down, the block on the Crocs so they can get the throw with Deep Root. Do they need it with Deep Root? Deep Root doesn't have any anything magical. They can throw with whoever they want. In fact, I wouldn't even bother with the block. I would just, I would have just moved him out and done the pass over here. I, I don't want to roll dice with no rerolls. All right. Well, here's the kick. We'll see. No kicker for the damage dragons. We'll see where the kick ends up. Probably kicks it dead center. He doesn't want to. Oh, oh, Hank the Ranger, you got your wish. Good deep kick here by the damage dragons. But now the Mootland Scout Troop has two turns to score. Three plus ball pickup. Fail the ball pickup. Oh no. So that's a lost turn for the Mootland Scout Troop. We'll see what the damage dragons try to do here, if anything. Probably just move the move Waz of the Moon over to Mark Assistant Leader Twiggy. Hank <laughs> the Ranger says that was all me. <laughs> <laughs> SP Beaver says War Horseman can get this. How can he get this? What are you talking about? <laughs> what on earth? So he moves in on the right side instead. Oh boy, he moves a skink up. I wonder what the I wonder what the idea behind that mark was. One die block. All right, fair enough. Yeah, he had four plus one plus the guard is five. Uh, four five or six rather. Four five six versus six is the one die block. Dead Freddy says, "Were the other TDs due to toss halflings?" Uh, no. No, they were not. Toss halflings, they're fun. Uh, and they're definitely part of the halfling game. Um, and they seem to happen more. They seem to to be safer than they are, but they are they are very risky. They're more risky than a normal pass. So a halfling coach can't rely on them. And uh, Artificial Bunny, to his credit, has not. One, two, three, four, five. Oh. GFI to the hand. Oh, boy. I don't think he can score. There's no way to get the ball up there. Right? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there's no way to score. So Artificial Bunny just taking the blocks. This one's going to end 2-1 to one in the Mootland Scout Troop's favor. Oh, boy, another halfling win. Oh, these halflings! These halflings! Ah! <laughs> What was that about? <laughs> Do you just hate yourself? <laughs> Do not. Oh no, double skulls, but it's on Zara, so it's not going to matter. That's going to be a turnover. Two to one. This game is going to end in the favor of the Moot. Well done, Tim Timmy Jr., the MVP for the Moot. He is injured. Um, he is badly hurt. He'll be out next week. Um, but otherwise, it's just fine. Uaz of the Moon will be the MVP for the Damage Dragons. He will be leveling up to level three. 
I can't believe this. <laughs> Mootland Scout Troop with 68% of the ball this evening. Man. Man. Whew. Whew. It caused five casualties, three KOs, two deaths. Man. SPP for the evening. Eight for the damaged dragons. 15 for the Mootland Scout Troop. That is, well, uh, 12 for the Mootland Scout Troop because they're going to lose the three on Zara. Uh, but not a bad pickup. Not a bad pickup. Dead Freddy says, I'm glad to be in the other division. <laughs> Let's take a look at the schedule before we leave. <laughs> Next up, we're going to be airing Thursday night game. Uh, Thursday, Thursday night's game. Thursday, August 10th at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. That's UTC minus 5. That's going to be the Brewmeisters versus the Dead Presidents. Malik versus me, Avi Unit 2. Uh, Chaos Dwarves versus Undead. I'm looking forward to that match. And then we have two yet to be scheduled. We have the Crimson Corpse Comrades versus the Dinnerbell Darlings. Amonthot Ep versus Doug the Minotaur. That's uh, Undead versus Dwarf. And then we have the Blood Isle Thanes versus the Masters of Mammal. Newcomer Duke Lamorne versus El Nuberino. That is Necro versus Dark Elf. Uh, those are the final two games to be scheduled here at this midway point in the Dungeon Bowl. And when those games get scheduled, you'll be able to check out and get alerted to those schedules on our website at... <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you for the, thank you for the bits, not so trusty practice. <laughs> Nerf athlete, sure. <laughs> when, those, uh, when those games get scheduled, you'll be able to check out and get alerted to those schedules on our website at mammal.club. That's M-A-M-L dot... C L U B here on Twitch or on our social media pages on Twitter, Mastodon, and Facebook. You can listen to our podcast, Mammal Talk, and watch previous games on our YouTube channel. Play Blood Bowl, man. This is so fun. <laughs> what a fun game this is. You can play Blood Bowl via Blood Bowl 2 and Blood Bowl 3 on Steam and in tabletop form at your friendly local game store until Thursday night, August 10th at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Take care, everybody and enjoy the rest of your Monday evening.